Well, for the first year ever, my uh, Harbor Freight Chipper Shredder won't start. y'all I messed up I finally have to work on my chipper shredder and not because of any fault of the chipper shredder but because I messed up <laughs> um, I left gas in it the gas is stale won't start got to take the carburetor off taking the carburetor off is pretty easy take your air cleaner top box off take the wing nut off lift the box up once you're inside there you'll be exposed with where the filters at there's two phillips screws there you got to take out then on the side here are two 10 millimeter nuts you got to take off once you get down to there it's just mostly removing a spring that attaches right here removing this rod removing your fuel filter line here clamp and then this slides right out so pretty easy to remove this carburetor just make sure that you keep everything same order that it goes out goes back in and uh, when I get the carburetor off I'll bring you back got to be one of the easiest carburetors I've ever taken off probably took less than five minutes gonna want to have you a container to drain the gas into I'm just gonna let it all drain out because that gas is stale and uh, not familiar with this particular type of carburetor but it looks like to me that probably take this nut off here, lets this bottom bowl come off. And uh, then I'll just go from there. So uh, shouldn't be too hard to actually fix this. Definitely going to be the problem. You can see all the corrosion, all the crud inside there. That is generally what happens. Look at that. So... Uh, Anyways, this looks like it's going to be pretty easy to do. Basically a typical carburetor setup. Pull this pin out right here. You're going to want to watch it. There's actually a needle jet right there that's attached to that. That little silver round thing right there. So when I pull this out, this is going to lift off. It is spring loaded. So you just kind of got to be careful how you do this. There's the pin I pulled out. Now I'm going to raise this straight up. Right there is the jet that I'm telling you about that I'm speaking of. Your needle valve. Generally, where this needle valve seats at will cause... Will get corroded up right there. And uh, that will cause fuel to stop from going into the bowl. Down inside of here... You've got a part that screws in with a regular screwdriver. You can kind of see the top of it there. So it goes down inside there like that. Screws down in there. Now that's got a hole that passes through it. An orifice hole. And that orifice hole is also clogged up. So I'm going to have to get that cleaned out. Anyways, I'll get it cleaned up in some carburetor cleaner. Then we'll get it running. Basically, I'll let this soak overnight so uh, it's basically a carburetor cleaner it's got like a little parts basket the needle valve has got rubber on it i don't think that's going to hurt it some of this stuff probably really don't even have to be put in there but i'm just going to do it just because now you can kind of see that how corroded that is inside that fuel bowl um this part i'm not going to put in there because technically it's not really like anything to do with that but this part here has got to go down in there and also this part here needs to go in there I'm going to be using this uh, wire brush here to kind of clean this bowl out on the inside. Get any 
crud that's still in there out. The one part we know we had issues with was this one that we know was clogged up and uh, it's actually looking pretty good right now I also brought this is the gas I actually drained out of the tank and even though it's probably not good to run the mower on it's probably sufficiently fine to rinse these parts off with so I'm using this old stale gas as a temporary parts cleaner call that good enough but anyways so back to the part now if you remember this was almost a uh, blackish collar from all the crud on it so this carburetor cleaner does a great job now this has got to be opened from one end to the other actually I can see I can actually see that it's open now I see uh, light when I look through the center of it. There's a little dimple there in the center and on this side it's way smaller but you got to make sure that that hole is opened up and of course I can blow air through it so that was the whole problem to begin with was it was clogged up and now I'll go ahead and let's see you can't even see where I'm at so I'm going to go ahead and put this back in, the center there. So then we're going to go ahead and get this back down in there. You want to make sure you do not cross thread that though. That would be bad. All right, so there's that one. And we'll go ahead and get our float and our needle valve in there. That goes right there. Go ahead and get our little pin in there. Then we got our fuel control. Here I am calling this stuff off. So I put the orifice valve down in there. I've got the float with the needle jet, and now I got my fuel control cover over here. Let me see if I can reposition this camera where you can see better. There we go. I think that was a 10 millimeter. So it's on there. Then we got this bowl that goes on here. It's held in place by this screw. And uh, you probably want this facing outward. So you want it facing kind of away from your fuel control in case you have to drain it. This bolt right here is to drain the fuel bowl. This other one on the very bottom is to take it on or off. All right, then we need a little plastic piece. It goes here and here. There's like a little finger that drops down on this plastic piece. That's so you can, that's your choke on and off. 
This is your fuel control on and off. And I believe that was all that we need. We can actually stick this back on there now. So this goes back this way. And there is a hose that I know I stuck a hole in. So I'm going to have to fix that. But I know that hose is long enough. I think I'm just going to snip off the end of the hose. And then shove it back down on there. Hopefully I can do it with these. I don't need to snip off too much of it. So I snipped off about a quarter of an inch of the hose because I kind of put a pinhole in the hose and even though I click, clipped off a quarter of an inch, that's going to be enough left on there for me to get the hose back on it. That should be good, I hope. Alright, then next I got to put the spring stuff back on here That's good now. Then we got the air filter cover thing, which has a gasket that has to go on. And that gasket is a specific shape, so you want to make sure you get that gasket on there, right? And then this has got to go on, and we've got to make sure we line up that thing here correctly. That's lined up, that's lined up. Put the two nuts on there. Then the two Phillips screws go on the top. Tighten these nuts up. You generally want to tighten these bolts up that hold, hold these carburetors on about the equal number of turns or, you know, the 
equal uh, amount of pressure, which is probably measured in foot pounds of an inch for this, but I'm just doing it by hand. I've done this enough time to know about what feels right. If you over tighten it, you risk breaking off that stud that holds it on there. All right. Then we've got our air filter goes on. Something like that with a nut that goes on top of it. we got the top one so I need to get some gas in this fresh gas I'm going to fill it up all the way. That's about halfway. And then, normally I would use like some starting fluid. I've got a little bit, but I lost this stupid spray thing off the end of it. I'm going to try it. So I just got some premium starting fluid. I'm going to try to get some to spray in there. Oh, it is going to spray. There's some starting fluid. Put this lid on it. Starting fluid is really just to help me get the carburetor primed. It's a free flow system, but the, the fuel bowl was empty because Let's see, this has got to be run, well start, this has got to be on, this over here has got to be on. better and I don't see any gas leaks so snipping the end of my fuel line actually worked there we go took me probably a total of take it apart five minutes put it back together you know however long this video is so yeah pretty easy fix that's a very common problem with all small gasoline engines you leave gas in them over the winter time without any type of fuel additive they can corrode up and they won't start in the spring. And that's exactly what was wrong with this. For no fault of the chipper shredder, totally on me. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.